Our program today will start by introductory remarks by our panelists. Let me introduce them. Our ambassador, Turkish ambassador to the United States, uh, Namak Tan. Um, Ms. Kat Henry, um, associate director of the programming department at the Jazz at Lincoln Center, and she's also the creator of the jazz series. And Mr. Tim Keating, uh, senior vice president for the buying company, which is the official sponsor of our event. Um, now, um, after the introductory remarks, we will open the floor to question. And now I leave the floor to Ambassador Tan. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our residence. This is a magnificent place, as you have seen. And uh, <coughs> uh, this building, uh, you, may, you might know of the story of this building, but I will later on talk about it to you all. Uh, and throughout uh, your presence here, probably we could see other parts of this building as well. And uh, <coughs> um, but at this stage, let me uh, say a few words uh, about what we are trying to do here. Um, the connection between Turkey and jazz music may not be obvious to many of you, but in fact, this building. Turkish Embassy residents played a special role in the development of jazz and American pop music. It is where Ahmed and Nesuhi Ertegun, the sons of Turkey's second ambassador to the United States, Mehmet Münir Ertegun, and the founder of Atlantic Records, established deep roots with the jazz community in Washington, D.C. Indeed, Given the extensive careers and had since the time of their youth in this town and the impact their achievements on American culture, I don't think it's an overstatement to say that the music that filled this house some 70 years ago made a small but important contribution to the culture of this country. While they lived in the residence during his youth in the 1930s and 40s, Ahmed and Nesihu Ertegun hosted jam sessions with the likes of jazz musicians such as Barney Biggard, Harry Carney, Rex William Stewart, Tommy Miles, and John Malachi. True Washington Though Washington was uh, segregated at the time, Ertegun brothers bridged cultures and brought people together with one common objective, celebrating music. It is uh, this same spirit that we are receiving at the Turkish Embassy residence today, and it is my great pleasure to announce our partnership with Jazz at Lincoln Center and our collaboration on the, on the Ertegun Jazz Series. Ahmed Ertegun sat on the board of Jazz at Lincoln Center, an organization that has done much to foster education about and appreciation for jazz, not only around the world. However, Jazz at Lincoln Center has even supported many jazz events and festivals in Turkey, too. We will have a series of six concerts through 2011. I will let Ms. Kat Henry announce the performance for our first concert and talk about the rest of the lineup we have planned for series. For our first concert on the evening of March 1st, we will be joined by our friends from Congressional Black Caucus and its affiliated organizations. Representative John Conyers, Jr. of Michigan, who is a founding member of the Congre Congressional Black Caucus and has been instrumental in protecting America's jazz heritage, will be our honorary host. 
I am also very pleased to have the Boeing Company as our official sponsor. Boeing has long supported cultural events in Turkey, and in particular, jazz festivals in Istanbul and Ankara, and we are grateful for their support. On March 1st, event comes on the heels of the Black History Month, a time of reflection and a great significance for this country. For us, it is a reminder of the legacy Ahmed and Nasuhi left us, uniting cultures and communities of people under one roof. In Turkish, Ertegün means living in a hopeful future. That seems a fitting description of how the Ertegün, Ertegüns viewed their own engagement with the United States, and in particular, with the African-American community. Though Ahmed and Nasihu discovered jazz before they arrived in Washington, it is here that they passion, their passion took flight. The boys were taken by all the great performers and musicians who played at the Howard Theater, which was once a Washington landmark. In an interview much later in life, Ahmed Ertegün said, I quote, I got my real education at the Howard, unquote. Located in the heart of the black district, the Howard was the nation's fir first theater built for black audiences and entertainers. At the Howard, the greatest stars of the day, Duke Ellington, Ella Fitzgerald, Count Basie, Billie Holiday, Louis Armstrong, and Lionel Hampton performed as I grew up. Ahmed would later say, I quote again, I began to discover a little bit about the situation of black people in America and experienced an immediate sympathy with the victims of such senseless discrimination. Because although the Turks were never slaves, they were regarded as enemies within Europe because of their Muslim beliefs." Unquote. Inspired by this passion, Ahmed Ertegün went on to found Atlantic Records as a celebration of the music of his youth. Through Atlantic Records, Ahmed introduced great musicians like Ruth Brown, Ray Clover, Ray Charles, and Aretha Franklin to the world and became one of the most important forces that transformed music in the US and around the world. In a short while, we are going to watch a clip from the PBS documentary on Ahmed Ertegün. Ahmed was famous for telling stories, as you'll soon see. Now, I will share with you a story he told. I will never grow tired of telling this story, not only because it is something that I, as, as a Turkish diplomat, take pride in, but it also shows the magnitude of transformation in this country uh, uh, which it has undergone. At that time of Ahmed and Nasui's youth in segregated Washington, African-American musicians were limited in where they could play their music. So the Ertegun brothers would invite them here for jam sessions. Around this time, their father, the ambassador, received a dis disapproving note from a United States senator who questioned whether black musicians were entering through the front door of the Turkish embassy. Ambassador Ertegun wrote the senator saying it was true. Black musicians were entering the building through the front door, adding that, and I quote, it is my practice to have my friends enter through the front door of the embassy. However, if you prefer, when you come to visit, you may enter through the black back door, unquote. As the ambassador of Turkey, it is my privilege to open the front doors of my house to all of you, unite our cultures, 
and share among our common love for jazz. And thank you. <laughs> jazz at Lincoln Center is truly honored to partner with the Turkish Embassy to present this series of jazz concerts. Uh, it has particular resonance for us because it is central to our mission, and I'll speak about that a little bit more, um, but because the series itself is featuring artists whose talents temporarily exceed their fame, but also people to whom uh, we've been uh, connected with for some time and who have proven themselves to jazz at Lincoln Center, not only for their musical talent, but the, for their uh, education talents and for their ability to foster cultural exchange. And um, as I said, this, this particular partnership is very central to our mission and uh, we're honored that uh, we can a uh, partner to do this because Ahmed was a member of our board. Uh, he was a guiding force at Jazz at Lincoln Center from its conception and in the development of Jazz at Lincoln Center. He never forgot his roots. He, um, he was very close friends with our artistic director, Wynton Marsalis, and was very excited when Lincoln Center wanted to develop um, a jazz uh, appreciation and jazz presentation. And when we opened our home at Columbus Circle, Frederick P. Rose Hall, uh, Ahmed donated funds to dedicate our new Jazz Hall of Fame in honor of his brother, Nesri. And Ahmed's widow, Mika, is still an active board member at Jazz at Lincoln Center. So we had a very close relationship with Ahmed. Um, the way that this concert series is central to our mission is in the idea of um, fostering cultural exchange. We have a long history with Turkey, the, the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra, as it was known then, the Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra first went to Turkey in 1995 to the Istanbul Jazz Festival. They returned in 2007 and uh, as part of our mission, uh, these kinds of tours, international tours and residencies take the music around the world. Uh, we produce thousands of events here each year with our chairperson, um, Lisa Schiff, chairman of our board, Lisa Schiff, and our executive director, Adrian Ellis, and Winton at the helm. We produce concerts and uh, education programs, radio shows and television broadcasts. Uh, programs for children, adult education programs, lectures. But a lot of this, a lot of um, what we're really about is getting this out there, both nationally and internationally. Um, most recently, we had a residency in Cuba that was documented on the television show 60 Minutes, which you may have seen. We've had residencies around the world uh, in Mexico City was another one this year. We've been to Yokohama. And all of our residencies have concerts, but they also feature um, education, master classes, concerts for young people, uh, and an opportunity in many cases for not, not only Winton, but members of the jazz orchestra to meet local musicians and the local community. As I said, we have been to Turkey twice uh, once in 1995, the second time the orchestra went back was in 2007, both times to the Istanbul Jazz Festival. Uh, since then, and even before that, um, another very, very important partnership that we've had, which is connected to Washington, D.C., and which has taken us to Turkey every single year since then, is Jazz at Lincoln Center's partnership with the U.S. Department of State. Uh, we run a program called the Rhythm Road. It's a continuum of the Jazz Ambassadors program that was started in the 1950s with artists such as Louis Armstrong and Dizzy 